Look, look, up there. You know, if somebody offers hospitality to you, there might be more in store for you and the person opening her door, more than you know. Verse 10, they honored us in many ways, and when we were ready to sail, they furnished us with the supplies we needed. And you can quickly skip, oh, okay, they, we were ready to sail, so they furnished us. But wait a minute, the next verse says, after three months, we put out to sea in a ship that had wintered in the island. And while I was praying about today's message, I thought, I don't want to just skip over this verse. Three months. Come on, let's get to the next exciting episode. What happened during three months? Well, we know there was preaching and healing. There was revival. There's normal day-to-day -day stuff, week after week. You know, Monday, then eight days later, another Monday, then eight days later, another Monday, Sunday, work weeks. That's what life is made of, cycles, over and over. Three months of cycles. Let's look at today. What is it today? Fifth Sunday, right? Doesn't always happen. Fifth Sunday. Do you remember anything in your Sunday school lesson from the first Sunday? No. I mean, I could bring Tom Ronk up here right now and say, Tom, $100 for three points from your first lesson of the month. And he'd go, uh, huh? That was a long time ago. Tom, it's January. It was only five weeks ago. Hundred bucks for three points from your message. He doesn't know anymore. What? You know yours. Why well, didn't offer you? <laughs> Someone want to pay her a hundred bucks? You see her, and she'll let you know. That's why we need to be continually reminded of what we've attained to. Now let's look at February. Let's see. First Sunday of February, Lord's Supper, right? And what else? That's it. Super Bowl. Finally, someone said it. You see, I don't care about Super Bowl. But you do. You do. You get in your big screen TVs and your Super Bowl parties and stuff. That's fine. That's all right. They got people out there, Christians on those teams too, don't they? You can make Super Bowl a Christian event. But for me, the biggest highlight of February is this, potluck for members. Now, Scott Shoemaker is going to play the piano. Scott, you saw three people come up here before you and read. Would you mind just coming up here and playing a little background music for me just for a moment? Push him there, Jane. Say, go, on, go ahead, honey, go, go. All right, Scott is not a member, but he's taken the membership class. He's gone through three sessions of membership stuff. And Andy's heard Woody Allen quoting Groucho Marx, I wouldn't want to join a club that would have someone like me for a member. Just keep playing, yep. Ladies and gentlemen, as you listen to Scott Shoemaker play the grand piano at Mel Road Baptist Church, we'd like to make the following announcement. That at the last name begins with the letter A through the letter M, we would ask that you bring a main dish. If your last name begins with an N, anywhere through the letter R, we ask that you bring a salad. If your last name is Zickfeld, we would ask that you bring desserts. And if you would like to help with set up or clean up, Please call Joanna Avery. Thank you, and a beautiful resolution. Thank you, Scott Shoemaker. Let's give it up for Scott. How about the members? Oh, really excellent. If they so choose, they can be voted into membership at that business meeting. To me, more memorable than Super Bowl Sunday. March, I don't see anything important. Maybe it's your birthday. 
But you know all I'm doing, what? Mission trip to Mexico, when is it? Skipping a Sunday. 23, 24, 25, 26, it's not in the bulletin, is it? Because the Rosenals do not read their bulletin. Now, they're good a lot about a lot of other things, but they do not read the bulletin. Patrice can tell you three points from the first Sunday of the month, but she cannot tell you what's in the bulletin because she doesn't read it. No, nah, I don't read the bulletin. I don't believe in plans. Well, they've got plans, 23rd, 24th, 25th, and 26th for a wonderful trip to Mexico. What happens in the third month from today? Well, April, taxes, yeah. And you don't have to pay them until the 16th. But the week before that, the Sunday before tax day, Resurrection Sunday, big plans for Resurrection Sunday, 6.30 at the Three Crosses. Breakfast. Lots of opportunity for you to pack this place. You know, somebody had an idea. We could feel like we had a bigger crowd here if we took out about 100 chairs. You know, it would. It'd feel, it'd feel a little more full if we took out about 100 chairs. And I said, you know, but if we just invited 100 people, it'd feel full as well. But they don't always come when you invite them. But some do. After three months, we put out to sea in a ship that had wintered in the island. It was an Alexandrian ship with the figurehead of the twin gods, Castor and Pollux. So they left Malta. We put in at Syracuse and stayed there three days. Do you see where Syracuse is on the map? From there, we set sail and arrived at Regium. The next day, the south wind came up, and on the following day, we reached Putioli. There's Putioli. Now, see what happens at Putioli. There we found some brothers. That means some Christians who invited us to spend how long? A week. Some brothers at Putioli invited us to spend a week with them. But you see, they're not going to get back on a ship. Now they're going to go by foot. See those yellow dots? They still exist today, people. And so we came to Rome, the Appian Way, a Roman road. You've heard about the Roman roads? It's the super information highway of Paul's generation, the Roman roads. So we came to Rome. They're walking a path like this. The brothers there had heard that we were coming, and they traveled as far as the Forum of Appius and the Three Taverns to meet us. According to my study, there is about the place of Forum of Appius, and there's the town of Three Taverns, a crossroads. The brothers in Rome had heard that we were coming and they traveled as far as the Forum of Appius and the three taverns to meet us. Different people showed up as we were on our mission trip to Rome. Remember, this whole time Paul's in chains. Paul's going to the very place that he wanted to go. Back when he was in his comfort zone, a free man. But now he's in chains and he's being taken as a prisoner to Rome. And yet, God is above all this. There are brothers in Rome who hear that he's arrived on the peninsula. And so they head out on the Roman road to meet him. At the sight of these men, Paul thanked God. This is where deep meets deep. When Paul looked down the road, looked at the, what's going to happen three months from now. Paul looks ahead, and at the sight of these men, look, when he starts to somehow recognize there's somebody that he knows, there they are. Paul thanks God, and he's encouraged. Look, up there. Don't be afraid of the future. Don't be afraid of tax day 2012. Don't be afraid of Super Bowl. 
And for sure, don't be afraid of the business meeting. Look up there. Thank God that you have a future. Make your plans. Hold on to your hopes. Be of good cheer. Look up there. I can imagine Paul saying, Is that Priscilla and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus, who risked their lives for me? In the 16th and last chapter of the book of Romans, Paul says to the church at Rome, Greet Priscilla and Aquila for me. For these fellow workers in Christ risked their lives for me. And greet the church that meets in their home. Look up there, is that Priscilla and Aquila? Or look up there, is that the church that gathers at their house? They take this trip to meet us halfway. Maybe Paul said, look up there, is that my dear friend Epinetus, the first convert to Christ in the province of Asia? Last I knew he was in Rome, because when I wrote the letter to the church at Rome, that's the last place I heard of him. Because Paul says in the 16th chapter of Romans, greet Epinetus, the first convert to Christ in the province of Asia. Is that Andronicus and Junius, my relatives, who spent time with me in prison? They are great among the apostles. Now, we know they're not the 12 apostles, right? Very possibly a husband and wife, because Junius is a feminine noun. A woman apostle, if you think about a woman missionary, if you think about one who is sent, yes. Or, another view of this, Andronicus and Junius are thought of highly by the twelve. I heard it being discussed some in a Sunday school class today about others who are called apostles besides just the twelve. The messengers. Is that Andronicus and Junius, my relatives, who spent time with me in prison? See, Paul is looking up with excitement, with hope. I plan to go to Spain and to stop by Rome. I plan to do this, and I hope to see you as I'm passing through and have you help me on my journey. And then finally, Acts 28, verse 16 says, When we got to Rome, Luke writing, I believe, when we got to Rome, Paul was allowed to live by himself with a soldier to guard him, still in chains. I don't want you to miss this. Simple stuff. You heard Kurt say it. You heard Heidi say it. You heard Tom say it. In your place of authority, don't abdicate your responsibility. Do the right thing. Be a leader in your place of responsibility. Lead others to the place of safety. Certainly physical safety. We try to save our kids and our grandchildren from unnecessary affliction. Don't touch that stove. Don't go up by that fireplace. You'll get burned. Their physical safety is of great concern to us. But what about their eternal safety? Don't keep walking away from God. There's a fire that will burn you. Repent. And at points of rejection, and you will face rejection, and points of attack, you will be attacked by the enemy of Jesus. Shake it off. If possible. And if you can't do it, ask somebody else to pray with you. Can you help me to pray through, to shake off this affliction, this burden, this oppression, this bondage? When hospitality is extended toward you, toward your house, when somebody opens their door to you or their life to you, pray, be gracious, be kind, and ask God, what do I do next? Look, up there, what is your plan? I know 
where I'll be the week after Super Bowl. See, now on Super Bowl Sunday, someone may invite me over. Hey, let's watch Super Bowl. I will do it out of Christian charity. Because <laughs> I don't care. But yeah, it's really important to me. Then probably I'll sit and watch a little. But what is your plan? The week after Super Bowl Sunday, I'm going to be here hoping that Scott and Jane are going to join Bell Road Baptist Church. That's my plan. But, you know, if you want to hear God laugh, tell him about your plan. What is your plan? What is your hope? If your hope's in the right place, my hope is built on nothing less than in Jesus' blood and righteousness. What's your hope? See, Paul's hope is right. And if your hope is right, if you thank God over bread on a ship that's being tossed and driven, if you thank God for people who are coming to meet you, even though you're in chains and you don't know what's going to happen with your future, if you are hopeful, the plans are going to work out God's way. So what is your next step? I'm going to ask John to come and sing a song for us and lead us in a song. I'm going to, at this time, ask men and women who believe in the power of prayer to come forward to be willing to receive you. See, what happens is that we don't care if the 49er and Giants game goes into overtime. Is that who played? Was it the 49ers? Somebody said the Niners, and was it the Giants? Yeah, and it went into overtime, right? And that's when the game was decided, right? But what if you said, you know, if you were a football fanatic, what if you looked at the watch and said, well, I've watched this long enough. It's going into overtime. Well, I've got plans then you ain't much of a 49ers fan or a Giants fan if you look at your watch and you're going to leave just at that critical moment because it's gone into overtime. Okay, so since a sufficient amount of guilt has been dumped on those who are ready to leave, <laughs> I'm going to ask you to stand at this time. Because the mind cannot absorb more than the seat can... Uh, Endure. Yes. Thank you. Christy Sandoff. If you are in trouble, James chapter 5 says, if you are in trouble, you should pray. And if you've not asked Jesus Christ to be your Savior, I've got to tell you, you are in trouble. And God's given you a way out of trouble. Pray. Come pray with a Christian. If you've not asked Jesus to be your Savior, come pray with a Christian. Tom, can I ask you to come on up here and be ready to pray? Tom knows what it is to turn his life over to Christ 100%. If you've not given your life to Jesus, come and pray with Tom or pray with Kurt or Gene. The Bible says if you're happy, you should sing a song of praise. Has God been good to you? Should you also look up and thank God and be of good cheer by singing this song with all your heart? People, it'll all be over soon. You'll get on to Applebee's or Wings Restaurant or Pappy's, wherever you want to go for lunch. It'll all be over soon, but if you're happy, sing a song of praise. And people, if you're sick, call upon the elders of your church. Let them pray for you. Let's pray.
Jesus, we pray. Let the church of the living God say amen. Amen. And love Jesus by loving someone next to you. Give somebody a hug or a handshake or, as Paul told the Romans, a holy kiss. <laughs>